Scotland, the home of the UK's best road trip. But this best road trip is not the NC500. This is the ultimate Scottish road trip. This journey covers the best beaches in the UK, the best driving roads in the UK, and some of the most awe-inspiring landscapes in the world. But best of all, this road trip can be done in as little as three days. Now in this video, I'll be explaining the ultimate Scottish road trip. I'll break down step by step, location by location, and help you plan the best road trip you'll ever go on in the UK. And I've also made a downloadable guide for this road trip and it goes over not just the route, but all the best things to do, the best places to visit, the best off-grid park-up locations, any locations for services in the area, our top five favorite things to do, and it's a complete guide for this specific road trip. I also have available the Ultimate Scottish Road Trip Bundle. This includes guides for the Isle of Harris, the Isle of Mull, the Isle of Arran, the Shetland and Orkney Islands, the Cairngorms, as well as this Ultimate Scottish Road Trip Guide, all all six guides are available in the link in the description for the small price of £10. Now I absolutely need to explain something about Scotland for anyone that doesn't know and that is that West is best. Now don't get me wrong, there is some beautiful locations right up north in Scotland and I love the Cairngorms too, but for the best scenery, the best driving roads and just all around the best of everything, you have to go West and that's where we start this road trip. The road trip begins here in Glasgow. Yes, I know that's a city and the scenery is not that great, but only a few miles north of Glasgow is where the scenery starts to become absolutely breathtaking. So bear with us, it'll be worth the wait. The first time as driving through Loch Lomond can be a pretty epic sight. It's a beautiful place and there's plenty of places to stop and enjoy the views. But as good as Loch Lomond is, it's got nothing on some of the views you're about to see. After Loch Lomond, you're going to continue north up the A82, where in no time at all you'll reach Loch Tuller. If you follow the road past there, up the mountain, you'll come to Loch Tuller viewpoint, which is like a big pullover point right on the corner, and the views are absolutely breathtaking. One thing that is worth noting as well is we often see a lot of red deer just below the Viewpoint car park if you arrive here earlier on the morning or later on the evening. So it's worth keeping an eye out to see if you can spot any. Now after Loch Tuller, everything is about to go completely nuts. If you've never been up here before, take a breath, relax, take your time because this part you'll never forget. The drive through the valley down to Glencore is one of the most iconic drives in the world. People travel from all corners of the globe to visit Glencoe, and for good reason. Now, no matter what footage I've got, what I see, what I tell you, nothing quite beats driving through Glencoe for your very first time. But I will try. It's amazing. Now it is worth stressing that a lot of people go to Glencoe. It can get pretty busy. So with that in mind, you need to make sure that you're responsible with where you park and that you're not obstructing the road because that happens quite often. And more importantly, you need to make sure you take all your crap and all your rubbish home with you. It's a bit of a common joke that Scottish people hate tourism and half the time I couldn't even blame them if they did because often these places are left in absolutely disgusting condition. Fire pits left everywhere, rubbish left everywhere, bags, trash, cans, everything just left all over the place. It doesn't take long to ruin even the most beautiful of places. So please, please, please be respectful while you're traveling anywhere in the UK. Leave the place better than what you found it. Anyway, now that you've had that ridiculous drive through Glencoe, you'll actually come to Glencoe town itself, which is right on a beautiful lock. Again, scenery is beautiful. You come over a bridge, carry on up the A82, and you head towards Fort William. Now, Fort William is the last big town that you're likely to encounter. So if you need any food, need to fill up your water, you want to go to the toilet, you've got McDonald's and all that sort of stuff there. So fill your boots while you're there, because after this, things get a little bit more rural. Now Fort William is where you may or may not see Ben Nevis. It's kind of there on your way in, the way we're driving. Sometimes with the clouds and everything else, you'll not even realize it's there, but it is. Now after Fort William, you've got a decision to make because there are two different directions that you can go in. You can either head north and head up to Skye, or you can head west 
across through Malig and all the beaches and everything. And for the purpose of this video, we're gonna head west. However, in the road trip guide, which like I said, the link is in the description for, we actually head north. But because it's circular, it doesn't matter which direction you pick. You'll come back the other way if you haven't gone that way in the first place. So just relax, just pick whichever direction you fancy at the time. Heading west from Fort William, you'll be driving along the A830 and you'll soon arrive at a pretty popular place because it was in some small film, I think it was called Harry Potter. And there you come across another location that was in that little film called Harry Potter, which is actually Dumbledore's grave. It's a small island with some trees on it in the middle of a lock and it's a beautiful place. I didn't even realize that's where it was from initially. I just remember the first time I seen it driving along that road and I was like, that is absolutely beautiful. I think at the time there was some low mist, so we'd just see the island and some trees popping out, but what a place, what a beautiful place. After that, you're not far from some of the very best white sand beaches in the whole of the UK. Now don't get us wrong, Harris is the best for beaches in the UK, in my opinion. However, nowhere else does everything else like this road trip does, so you have to bear with us. Plus, these beaches are different. Luskintay is vast, it's huge, it's beautiful. These beaches around sort of Murrah, Malig area, are sort of small private coves that you can find a nice little spot to nussle into on a night time, watch that sunset over the ocean with Rome and everything else in the distance. It's breathtaking, we love it. Take a couple of cans or a couple of drinks or a coffee or a tea or whatever it is down there where you just sit, enjoy the views, enjoy the scenery. It's absolutely gorgeous. Next up, you are gonna be heading to the Isle of Skye, which means you need to book a ferry. So pop onto CalMax website, book a ferry, and then pray to the ferry gods that it doesn't get canceled because they're not the most reliable. We prefer to book our ferry for early in the morning. So then we've got the full day on the Isle of Skye when we get there. Ideally, Malig and Mirai, you wanna be there for sunset, not sunrise because it's on the wrong side. So get there for sunset or spend sunset there and then get a nice early ferry across the sky where everything else is about to go nuts again. Now when you're on Sky, you can really fill your boots. There's so many different things you can do, so many types of activities, views, and all the rest of it to do that it would be hard to explain in this video what you should do because everything's different and it all depends on the weather. However, in the Ultimate Scottish Road Trip Guide, there's over 25 different locations just on the Isle of Skye, plus two of our top five favorites are actually on the Isle of Skye as well. So if you are wanting to plan things out, say even just for a day, or if you want to spend a whole week or longer on the Isle of Skye, you'll find plenty of things to do in the guide. Again, link for that is in the description below. Now, just like Glencore, you won't ever forget that first time you arrive on the Isle of Skye and start taking in the views. The mountains, the big rocky outcrops, the sunrise over Kerrang, sunset at Nice Point, just the views as you're driving around are absolutely out of this world. I mean, literally out of this world because they look like nothing else I've ever seen before. Now again, sky is a very well covered topic on YouTube or anywhere else, and it's hard to do the place justice, but here's my attempt at trying to show off the very best of the Isle of Skye. <laughs> Once you've had your fill on the Isle of Skye, it's time to head back off the island. And this time it's a lot easier than getting there was because you're just driving off a bridge. You don't have to worry about ferries that might get canceled. But there's a reason, because if you didn't get them ferries, you wouldn't have seen them beaches in the first place because it's a dead end. So anyway, come back off the island. First place you're gonna come across is a place called Dorney. And there you'll come across Eileen Donnan Castle, which is one of the most breathtaking, unbelievable castle locations in the whole of Scotland. You'll have seen photos of it, you've probably seen videos of it, but you might never have seen it before, and if you haven't, you'll notice it the second you see it, because it's beautiful. There's a couple of pubs and everything in that area as well. One of them literally has pub painted on the roof of the building, so you can see it from miles away, which is handy. Pop in there for some food if you want and something to eat. But 
Eileen Donald Castle is definitely worth a visit. After this, you're gonna be heading east on the A87, and unfortunately, coming in this direction, you're not gonna see the best of the views. However, there are plenty of pullover locations on your way back down towards Loch Garry, and I would definitely suggest pulling over and taking in the views, because unfortunately, like I say, it is gonna be behind you, so if you pull over, you get to see it all. And this is one of the few places where cloud inversions seem to happen almost every time I'm there. I would say it's probably 50-50. And if you're not sure what a cloud inversion is, that's when you're driving along and the clouds are lower than what you are and it just looks breathtaking. We've getting some cool drone footage, some amazing photographs, and it's just, we always get excited because normally we go the other way and you know that you're getting close to the eye of the sky when you see it, but just the views of here in itself are gonna be beautiful. So take that in, enjoy it, and then we're gonna carry on south. Now after this, you're gonna be coming across a lock that's named Lock Locky, and it's beautiful as well. It might not feel as gorgeous as it is because of all the other scenery you've just seen, but again, there's a few pullover points. It's a very long with mountains on the other side. It's gorgeous, so again, worth pulling over. There's normally burger vans in that there, which is ideal. Pull over, get some food, sit outside, just look, take in the views. It's gorgeous. Can get windy here though, but it's Scotland. It can get windy everywhere. Now, not long after Loch Lochie, you're gonna to come to the Commando Memorial. So it's an old World War II bronze statue of three commandos with some breathtaking scenery in the background. It's a very popular tourist spot, so it's worth a visit to go and see it. It's big, it's beautiful, and you've got obviously the nice scenery behind it. So yeah, after that though, you're pretty much back at Fort William. Now you still have a couple of options. Option one, you can actually head back the way that you came in. Because it's Scotland, often what happens is when you're driving, the weather might not be great, so you just miss somewhere and I've got no doubt in my mind that you won't have stopped at every single spot on your way up because probably the weather wasn't great at that specific time so if you didn't do that there and the weather's decent on the way back then it's worth stopping do that go and see the things you didn't get to see on the way out or you've got two more options now it's a hard one for us to say this one because Glencoe is so beautiful and it's always good to drive up the opposite way if you've never driven up that way both directions are beautiful so it's a hard one to recommend. However, you can skip Glencoe and head south down through a barn. And there's a different route that brings you around and brings you back towards Loch Lomond afterwards. Again, it's nice, it's pretty. For me personally though, missing Glencoe. I love driving through Glencoe, no matter how many times I've done it now, it's different every single time. And if you've only driven down the valley, you're kind of going to have to drive back up it because it's just such a different experience altogether. Now the final option is you can actually not go to Fort William at all and you can actually head up the A86 towards Ligon. Once you get up there, that's a beautiful view and everything else as well. The lock is gorgeous, there's some cool stuff. There was a Bond film filmed there and then you can head down the A9, I think it is, to Perth and come back to Edinburgh and come back that way. But again, if you're doing that and you've never done Glencoe other than on your way up, Personally, I'd recommend driving back up the valley of Glencoe and coming back the way you came because it just feels completely different. Now, I must add there is places in Scotland that do all of these things individually better. Like I said earlier, Harris has probably the best beaches in the whole of the UK by a mile. The Cairngorms for me is one of my favorite places to go and do sort of hikes and that kind of stuff and outdoor activities. There's some breathtaking views right up north on the NC500 and some beautiful beaches on the sort of north, northwest edge of the NC500 as well, but nothing does all of that as well as this road trip does. However, if you do want to visit any of them sort of areas and you're looking for guides for them, again, we've got a Harris, Cairngorms, Arran, Mole, Orkney and Shetland, as well as this, all available on the website in the description below, individually for four pounds or as a full pack of six for £10. Now that you've got everything that you need to know to have the ultimate Scottish road trip, have you ever thought, what actually is van life? 